Imagine Mary, a 23rd century neuroscientist whose field of expertise is color vision. She knows everything there is to know about how the brain processes color, but she only sees in black and white. So all of her knowledge about the color spectrum and the physiology of the eye is academic. Now there's something left out of her account and something left out of any description of the world in purely third person terms, namely what it feels like, what it feels like to see something red. One day, Mary is released from her black and white world and given the ability to see red for the first time, to experience it consciously. Surely, her first experience of color would be something she couldn't have anticipated, even with all her previous knowledge. This thought experiment suggests there will always be more to consciousness than objective observation. Now, this is the essence of consciousness. For any conscious state, there is the question, what's it feel like to be in that state? What's it like? What is the qualitative character of it? Now, that's so hard for us to accept, but it's obviously true. See, our scientific tradition up to this point has tended to resist that because we think, well, no, there ought to be some neutral third-person description. And, of course, there are third-person descriptions of consciousness, but the essential thing about consciousness itself, the actual essence, is there's always something it feels like to be in a conscious state. If you have any doubts about that, just pinch yourself or scratch your head or hit yourself on the knee and you will discover the existence of a qualitative state. That's the guts of consciousness. The question, what is consciousness, ranks right up there in complexity with what is life. Even with the growing amount of scientific investigation, there's not really much we know for sure. But I know one thing. The more I find out about this, the greater my sense of wonder about my inner world and its place in the universe. Some of the really big questions, the classic one is, why is a rose beautiful, for example? Um, I don't know that we'll ever necessarily figure that out. And, you know, sometimes we, we scientists get very arrogant. We sometimes think we know it all or we can figure out everything and that we've got the tools that can unlock all the mysteries of the universe. Well, maybe sometimes, and maybe not. If we wouldn't know about consciousness, if we wouldn't have this first-person account of consciousness, we'd never believe it. But we do. We all do, at least most of us say we do. And so, therefore, we need to explain it. The answer to this question, what is consciousness, is the, is the answer to the question, what sort of beings are we? And it's the different definitions of ourselves that's at stake when we try to get a theory of consciousness.